As I mentioned with our previous guests, we're still waiting for all the facts in this case of the FBI raid on Mark Houck's home. But there is a growing sentiment that there is a two-system track of justice under the Biden administration. You know, one for conservatives and one for those on the left. Now, we see this not just from the recent FBI arrest, but also from the lack of arrest made in the almost 100 attacks on churches and pregnancy resource centers since May the 2nd. Now, we've, there may have been some state charges. We've been looking as to whether or not there has been state action. I think there has been. But as of yesterday, when we inquired with the FBI, the Washington Stand did, um, no acknowledgment that there have been any arrests. And then you look back at the summer of 2020, there was a lot of indictments at the end of that uh, period of rampage. But under the Biden Department of Justice, we've seen nothing about actually the prosecution of those indictments. Joining me now to discuss this is John Dawkins. He is the former acting assistant attorney general for the Civil Rights Department at the U.S. Department of Justice. John, welcome back to the program. Oh, thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to be with you. So are, are, are Americans right to be concerned, thinking that their system of justice in this country has been politicized and there's a two-track two system of justice? Uh, yes, they are, I'm afraid. Uh, one of the things uh, that was most important about the Sessions and uh, Bar uh, uh, tenures in the Department of Justice is that it depoliticized the uh, Justice Department from what had happened during the Obama years. And we've seen a reversal of that now with the Biden administration. Uh, the Justice Department is supposed to be above politics, uh, and that's not what we're seeing here, Tony. I mean, you have this case like this arrest in Pennsylvania where you have this pro-life activist. The state charges were dropped. They were thrown out. And a year, almost a year later, you've got the FBI converging on his home, nearly two dozen, according to reports. You've got the FBI raid of the former president's residence. Those receive a lot of attention. But what about choosing not to focus on the lawlessness from the left? I mean, that's a greater concern for me is that you see this lawlessness and, and we see record high levels of homicides. I think it goes back to, uh, to the summer of 2020 when you had, in fact, law enforcement agencies have uh, one of the major law enforcement agencies for uh, city police officers, chiefs of police, said over 2,000 officers were uh, injured during that summer of 2020. And many local prosecutors, even though there were like 16,000 arrests, many of them refused to prosecute. Yes, it's really a terrible situation and terrible for law enforcement. Um, there have been very few prosecutions of uh, people who acted um, criminally in connection with the Black Lives Matter uh, riots that occurred. There certainly were uh, appropriate demonstrations and exercises of the First Amendment, but there were also riots. There was arson, there was looting. Uh, I saw that myself when I was living in D.C. and working with the Department of Justice. There were uh, violent attacks on uh, law enforcement and other people, uh, and I believe there were over 50 uh, homicides in connection with these riots. Um, and we're seeing very, very little in the way of prosecution. Compare that to what we've seen um, with respect to the January 6th uh, right. people who are criminally convicted, some of whom are facing very stiff, uh, have been sentenced to very uh, stiff sentences uh, for largely nonviolent or at least uh, acts that didn't cause injury to others. Yeah, and, and that's my perception, John. But I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want to fan the flames of lawlessness. And I, and I think we've got to be very careful you know, just because the left gets away with this lawlessness, we cannot embrace that idea because our republic stands upon the idea that we are governed by the rule of law. But when you lose faith in the agencies that are tasked with enforcing the law, it becomes very difficult. So how can the Department of Justice and the FBI regain the faith and confidence of the public? Well, what they need to do is what, what happened under uh, Jeff Sessions and under Bill Barr, which is to, to as the uh, Chief Justice said, call balls and strikes. You just uh, do your job and follow the law where it leads you without thinking about the politics of it. T Tony, if I could give you another uh, example, which is um, uh, I was personally involved in while at the Justice Department. Uh, there was a situation at the University of Vermont Medical Center 
a hospital in Vermont where the hospital forced nurses to perform abortions against their religious uh, beliefs. Uh, there's clear federal law that protects health care providers from being forced to perform abortions. Uh, when I was at the Department of Justice, I was personally involved in bringing uh, legal action against the Vermont Medical Center uh, to stop them from doing that. Um, when we left office, when the Biden administration came in, one of the first things they did was dismiss that lawsuit. And there's really no justification whatsoever for having done that. People may have different views on uh, whether abortion should be restricted and to what extent it should be restricted, but I, it's very hard for anyone to justify forcing uh, someone who believes uh, that abortion is wrong to, to participate in abortion. So that's, a, I think, a good example of, right. of what we're getting out of the Biden Justice Department. It's a great example from the standpoint of the law is the law. The law is passed by Congress, the elected representatives of the people. And for the Department of Justice refusing to enforce that law, that that's my point. It is fueling lawlessness. And that once people lose confidence that there is a system of justice, the lady justice is actually blind, folded, and she doesn't see, and she dispenses justice equally. When that, when that concept is lost, our republic is in trouble. Well, that's absolutely right. Now, on, on, the, on the hopeful side of things, we do have... Uh, state attorneys generals in a number of states who are continuing to apply the law fairly and um, to um, uh, not act politically. We also have right. the ability to bring civil suits. Um, and there are several, they're not that many, but there are several groups out there, um, uh, public interest groups that are trying to protect uh, religious freedom, the, the Beckett uh, Foundation, for example, and, and others, um, which, which are there to try to help folks. And, and uh, Mr. Halk, I believe, is being represented by uh, the, uh, the Thomas More uh, Society, yes. helping him out as well. Those, those groups are more important now than ever. John, thanks so much for joining us. Always appreciate your insights and uh, I think a very constructive conversation. Thanks so much. Great being with you again. Thank you.